Let's get a wrap up on of the international news from our London studios. Simon Fusay is standing by with Around the World in Five. Good evening from the Channel's newsroom here in London. China has accused protesters who vandalised Hong Kong's parliament of serious illegal actions that trample the rule of law. A group of activists occupied the Legislative Council building for several hours after breaking away from a peaceful protest. They smashed their way into the building and spray-painted slogans in the government chamber, as well as vandalising paintings and artefacts. Hundreds of police then moved in during the early hours of the morning and used tear gas to disperse demonstrators. It follows weeks of mass protests over a controversial extradition bill and comes as tensions between protesters and the government increase on the 22nd anniversary of the handover of power from British to Chinese rule. Hong Kong's chief executive said she strongly condemns the violence. The second scene that we have seen, which really saddens a lot of people and shocks a lot of people, is the extreme use of violence and vandalism by protesters who stormed into the Legislative Council building um, over a period of time. So uh, this is something that uh, we should seriously condemn. While the UK government also criticised those taking part in violence, the foreign minister did caution Hong Kong's authorities not to use the protests as a reason to limit people's freedom. We urge the authorities not to use what happened as a pretext for repression, but rather to understand the root causes of what happened, which is a deep-seated concern by people in Hong Kong that their basic freedoms are under attack. Pro- and anti-Brexit parties caused a stir with their antics at the European Parliamentary Plenary Session, the first since May's European election. Brexit party members who are pushing for the UK's departure from the EU turned their backs on musicians as the bloc's anthem, Ode to Joy, was played. Several MEPs from the UK's Liberal Democrat Party attended the session wearing yellow T-shirts marked with the words, Stop Brexit. Meanwhile, outside the building, thousands of Catalan protesters gathered in front of the Parliament in Strasbourg to demand that their elected leaders be allowed to take their seats after they were blocked from collecting their MEP credentials. It comes as EU leaders reconvened in Brussels for their third consecutive day of talks to try and agree on who should fill key positions within the European Parliament. On Monday, a number of states blocked socialist Dutchman Franz Timmermans from taking up the highest profile post. Arriving for the meeting, Czech Prime Minister Andrzej Babis told the reporters Timmermans was not the right choice. But the Spanish Prime Minister disagrees. He has been refused because he has defended uh, principles and European values, and because he has defended uh, the treaties. And this is something unacceptable for us. You cannot reject a person because he has uh, defended the treaties and the principles and the European values that we stand for. The body of a man thought to have been a stowaway who fell from a Kenya Airways flight on its way to Heathrow Airport has been found in a garden in London. London's Metropolitan Police said they were called to a home in Clapham in South London on Sunday. It's thought he fell from the landing gear of the plane. A post-mortem examination is due to be carried out and the man has not yet been identified. Monsoon rains have caused several walls to collapse in India, killing 27 people. Heavy rain brought a wall crashing down on shanties built on a hill slope in a suburb of Mumbai, killing 18 people, while a further three people died when a school wall collapsed in the city of Kalyan. It's as a second day of bad weather disrupted rail and air traffic in the financial capital, prompting officials to shut schools and offices. During every monsoon season, which runs from June to September, India experiences fatal incidents of building and wall collapses as rainfall weakens the foundations of poorly built structures. Some of the world's brightest minds in astronomy have gathered at the Chilean Andes ahead of the coming solar eclipse. Coquimbo's La Silla Observatory will host national and foreign scientists travelling to the area to observe the eclipses. Observatories around the world have also supplied specialist equipment to their teams to capture and investigate the phenomena. Scientists will be paying particular attention to a specific moment in the eclipse. When the moon blocks the sun's disk, a white light of the outer solar atmosphere is revealed. And finally, a NASA crew capsule has blasted off from a Florida launch pad. Two, one, ignition. 
The mission is to complete a key astronaut safety benchmark ahead of NASA's plan to return humans to the moon by 2024. The test was to ensure astronauts can be fired to safety in the event of a rocket failure. And that's your international news around the world in five. Right, gentlemen, thanks indeed, Simon. Olumide Macaulay has the sports news tonight. Thank you, Gimba. Hello, welcome to Sports News. The Super Eagles of Nigeria will face holders indomitable Lions of Cameroon in the round of 16 of the 2019 African Cup of Nations on Saturday, July the 6th in Alexandria. Cameroon played a goalless uh, draw with Benin Republic to finish second in Group F with five points, while Ghana topped the group with five points after beating Guinea-Bissau 2-0 in their final group game. Mali will face West African rivals Cote d'Ivoire in the last 16 after beating Angola 1-0 to finish top of Group E. Tunisia scraped through to the last 16 despite playing goalless with Mauritania and will face Ghana. Christian Asu has been ruled out of the rest of the 2019 African Cup of Nations with a hamstring tear. Officials say Atsu returned to England for treatment at his club, Newcastle United. He went off just 15 minutes into Ghana's goalless draw against Cameroon in Ismailia last week, and doctors have said he's unable to play the rest of the tournament. Atsu was named best player of the 2015 Africa Cup of Nations. In tennis, Rafael Nadal has set up a tantalizing showdown with Nick Kyrgios after breezing into the second round of Wimbledon with a routine straight sets win over qualifier Yuichi Sugita. Seated third, world number two, the world number two, wrapped up a 6-3, 6-1, 6-3 victory in just over two hours. Harris battled into the second round after a roller coaster five-setter with fellow Australian Jordan Thompson. Federer required a wake-up call from debutante Lloyd Harris before beating the South African in four sets to reach the second round at Wimbledon. Harris playing in his first Grand Slam sent the crowd into shock when taking the first set 6-3, but Federer recovered in style to seal a 3-6, 6-1, 6-2, 6-2 win. Britain Jay Clark awaits Federer in the second round after the world number 169 recorded a four-set win against Noah Rubin. And that's it on Sports News. Gimba is back with the rest of the news at 10. And finally, tonight. Senator Ishaku Abbo has admitted to being the one in a viral video where he was caught on camera beating up a woman at a store in the nation's capital, Abuja. But Senator Aboto Channel's television correspondent, Kayla Megwa, that the incident, which has gone viral on social media, happened before he became a senator, and that the viral part of the vital part of the video has been chopped out. The senator told our correspondent that he was called to the scene of the incident following an assault on his sister, stating that he arrived with an ambulance and the police to apprehend the perpetrators of the assault, and that was when the incident occurred. He says the incident is not one he's happy about, that the video is being dug out now to spite him as a politician. In relation to the viral video. Yes, I'm calling in relation to that viral video. We're wondering if we could get an official statement from you. Yeah, we will soon release an official statement to the very old video that was uh, that happened before I became a senator, where my younger sister was beaten to a pulp in a shop and I was called upon there. I had to call an ambulance and the police to come to the scene and to go out of hand. Where I was also beaten down by I me, mean, beaten to the pulp, I mean to assaulted really. It's an old video, but we will soon release a statement to that effect. Okay, so you're saying basically that it was your sister who was at the store and she was assaulted? Assaulted. In fact, she fainted in the shop, but they, but they compressed the video and cut that part out of it. Okay, so your and sister, your sister video, which one is your yes. sister? In that video, the, the lady in the spaghetti strap? They, they took her out. They took her out to resuscitate her. They were standing with, with the cup there as a doctor. 
a doctor have to come to give her life. Okay, so you're saying your sister is not in the video that we're seeing, they cropped her out? No, 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 it was not there. It was, it was completely uh, cropped out of it. Interesting times. And the main news again. President Muhammad Buhari today reaffirmed his commitment to ending insecurity in the country. The president also explained that he will not disappoint Nigerians in delivering on his three key promises to the citizens. And that's how it's been on the news at 10 tonight. I want to thank you so much indeed for watching. On behalf of all of us here, have a splendid month. I am Gimba Omar, and good night.